Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not an editing tutorial, but a means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own project. If you're like me and really enjoy having something on while you work, sometimes the content that you like is very visually engaging and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Happy Monday to you. It is the Monday before the Thanksgiving holiday that we are uh, acknowledging here in the United States. It is on Thursday and I will be working up until that Thursday. Um, usually at my job, we have like an early closure on the Wednesday, but uh, considering the circumstances and us not really being physically at our location, we are working all the way through Wednesday, which actually isn't that great for me because I do have to cook. If you remember from my one of my videos last week where I talked about what our plans were, my partner is insisting that I make us a very starchy, carb-heavy meal for the holiday. So we went to the grocery store in person last week on Wednesday to get all of the ingredients we needed, or I needed, to be able to make what they want to eat. And I didn't want to risk having a home delivery because sometimes when they or or when we order things online they don't pick the right thing or what we want is out of stock and then we have to make another op delivery schedule to get anything missing from either another store altogether and it just costs a lot of money with um, the risk of like say the turkey being too big because they're like, hey, they want a turkey, even though I said I only needed, you know, 10, 12 pound turkey, and they come in with like a 20 pound turkey, 15 pound turkey, we're going to have a problem. So I was like, let's just go in person. And that was the ultimatum to my partner. I'm like, if you want this meal, you have to drive me to the store and we have to eat, or we have to eat, we have to actually walk through and get all of the things so that we can have our meal. So we ended up having to go to two stores because the store we usually go to that offers like a discount rate of food did not have everything. So we had to pick up a couple more items at the, the general local chain. So Beyond that, today, as the title describes, we are working on the sock for my aunt. This is actually the second sock. I've already pretty much completed the first sock. It is downstairs. I have to bring it up here because this is where my notions are, and I need to weave in the toe string and the heel, or not the heel, the ankle part. So... Right now, I am working on the second sock, and we are working on the gusset right now. So we're decreasing two every other round until we are at um, 36 stitches around. We had to cast on 36 for the, the leg, and now we have to get down to 36 stitches for the foot part before we can just knit around. And the size that I'm knitting for her is the same size I'm knitting for my uncle. This is also bulky weight. This is Karen brand yarn. This is from their Pantone collab that they did maybe a couple years ago. And it's knitting up well enough. I suppose, you know, it's so close to worsted weight which I think is why it was on clearance when I bought it, because it's definitely closer to worsted weight than it is to bulky weight. Just the the twist is t so tight, it's um, a lot smaller than like the paint box yarn that I was using 
earlier, but I'm still treating it as bulky weight per pattern, so I had to cast on 36 stitches to um, use this one, and that is what I am doing. This is my even round, so I'm just knitting around, and then the next round will be my decrease round again. Thankfully, with the 36 stitches, using this bulky weight, like I mentioned last week, it's going by so much faster. So I'm very pleased. And then, after I finish her sock, I will still need to finish... Um, my cousin's son sock and then work on his second sock and then get my brother's sock going and then that will conclude the family socks and then I'll have everybody's ready so happy about and then I'll have to whip up my um my partner's mom and dad's socks but they live closer since they're in Texas and I'm in the Midwest. It'll be easier to ship to them than shipping from the Midwest to the West Coast where my family resides. So I'm not too worried about getting theirs done because I'm going to be using the same bulky weight to get theirs taken care of. But yep just knitting around and I don't know if you guys saw that Jenny had made a perfect point on my video from Wednesday that I should make a grid to keep track of my knitting for next year's holiday gifts so that I will have everything done by December and I think that is a wonderful idea along with her earlier another video she'd commented earlier on about keeping a schedule throughout the week on what projects I work on so that I can touch different projects and I think that's also a great idea so I'm hoping part of my 2021 goals will incorporate those methods of keeping track of my knitting projects so it's not flailing around in the month of December or November trying to get things done by the deadline to have everything mailed in time so we'll see we'll see how it goes so let me know in the comments are you doing anything for Thanksgiving if you are U.S. side of the world and you live here or if you're an expat and live overseas somewhere, are you celebrating? If you are, are you making anything or just taking it as a moment to be off with your home family, that is the people you live with and safely observing the holiday I got a I was reading this report this morning that airports are cram packed with people who are disregarding orders to you know be a little bit cautious about traveling and exposing loved ones to the virus or exposing yourself but nobody Nobody seems to be minding that too much. I personally, as you guys know, will just be with my partner. And we often are just together anyway for the holidays. We used to have our good friend come over for Thanksgiving, but he he moved to California and some things had occurred there that have prohibited him from moving back when he thought he would be. So we are still at a distance from him and last year my partner went to visit family in 
a neighboring, well, not neighboring neighboring, but a, a close enough state that they could go to. So they went there, but of course, because he should not be traveling, especially interacting with people outside of your household, we are not going to be doing that. So I am cookie. And if you didn't watch, um, I forget which video exactly it was last week that I talked about it, but our menu, it is, um, sweet potatoes, like the, uh, traditional, so-called traditional candied yams, but, uh, the store we went to didn't have yams, they had sweet potatoes, but they're close enough. I've had them both in succession and didn't notice that much of a difference. I will say I think that the yams were like harder, or no, uh, softer than the sweet potatoes to cut. But other than that, not too much different. And we're also having turkey because that's what my partner wants. So I have, I took out from the freezer just today the turkey that needs to thaw for several days before I can pop it in the oven. And my partner wants the macaroni, so we're having baked macaroni and cheese. We were have, well, they are having, they picked out garlic knots from the store instead of like just plain rolls. They're like, this will be good, right? I'm like, you're going to eat it, I I guess. I mean, you like garlic rolls, I suppose. You know, th this is a person who usually will try to put things together that don't normally go together and then become gravely disappointed when they mix things together that don't belong together and wonder why it hasn't been done before. And that's exactly why. So if they want garlic bread that I, you know, it's a fine thing to eat, but I usually associate it with more of like an Italian dish than like standard American Thanksgiving food. Like you think of rolls, you think buttered rolls, just plain wheat or white or sourdough rolls with your food. You don't think of garlic. But if you do usually eat garlic bread with your Thanksgiving dinner, let me know, but I have never in my life had garlic rolls with my Thanksgiving dinner and all my years of eating Thanksgiving dinner. So I was a little bit head scratch in that, that decision, but I'm like, that's what you want. So I'm going to put it in the cart. So they're doing that. They are having gravy, of course. They wanted dressing. So I am doing like a cornbread dressing and I'm taking from two different recipes like the preparation of the cornbread I'm taking from one and then the assembly of the actual dressing itself with the bread like the white bread and the cornbread mixed together and the broth and all that um, is from another recipe so the uh, Frankenstein dressing and what else did they want? They wanted something else, I think. Um, I can't even remember anymore. That might have been all of it. But it was definitely more than what I had said. I said, pick three things, because I really didn't want to cook anything more than three things. And then they gave me, like, a whole list of stuff. So I'm actually not going to eat too much of all of that. I personally have been keeping more of an eye on how much things I eat and what I eat. So I bought myself a lot of vegetables and like colorful, oh, mashed potatoes. That's right. That's the other thing. They wanted mashed potatoes. So we have a big old stack of potatoes. <laughs> um, but I bought like cauliflower mash just a box so that'll be like my main course is just the cauliflower mash and then I'll have like a little scoop of macaroni a scoop of stuffing 
um, some steamed broccoli. I'll have um, uh, maybe a slice of turkey. I don't, I don't like sweet potatoes like that, so I'm not going to do the candied yams slash candied sweet potatoes, but um, I'll make it look even more appetizing. And yeah, I just like don't want to make it because, yeah, I could do like half portions, but considering the stuff that I buy doesn't come in half portions, and I have like all the stuff that I bought just for making this Thanksgiving meal. It's just going to be extra leftovers in the freezer or in the fridge for a few days before I freeze what they don't eat so that they have some other stuff to munch on throughout the week later. I mean, the one thing about turkey is most of it's just carcass anyway, so it's not really that much meat once you actually cook it. It's just, um, the fact that it's big. But once you break it down, it's fine. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you are the person who does the cooking, or is there somebody else in your household who does the cooking, or is there like one dish you do and somebody else is known for something else, you know, do, how does it normally go in your house? Now, if I was like back with my family, like my parents and my cousin, my cousin surprisingly, who does not eat red meat, usually is the one who makes the ham, and my aunt and my uncle would do the turkey, and my aunt does her cornbread stuffing she'll or dressing she'll do a dressing that's regular and then she'll do one that has oysters in it and she does sweet potato pie which I don't I don't eat I don't eat sweet potato pie I don't eat pumpkin pie I don't eat like the custard ones really because I just don't like the the consistency of them except for lemon meringue I'll I'll eat a lemon meringue pie but that's about it and um and then my aunt will do greens, like greens and cabbage mixed together, which is always my favorite. Um, I think my, my cousin does the macaroni too, because that's actually the recipe I use when I make it. And my aunt does succotash, which is okra and corn, which again, I don't eat because I don't like how slimy the okra is. It's just the texture thing really grosses me out. So I don't, I don't partake in that. And we have, we have rolls and salad and I feel like there's something else that they do. But it's been so long since I've been home for Thanksgiving that I kind of vaguely remember all of, some of the other sides. But those are like the main, the main things. We don't usually do potatoes. Because we have, like, so many other carbs. Like, it's not so much the carbs. It's like we have so many other starchy things that we just, like, we don't need that. We have bread. We have macaroni. We have stuffing or dressing. So we don't need potatoes, too. So it kind of just depends on your family, like, what you guys have as your exercise. But... I'm just excited to have a couple days off, a long weekend. I haven't, well, I haven't had any time off since the last time I was off, which was on November 4th? No, no, no. November 6th. Yes, November 6th. It feels like it was a long time ago. And it wasn't that long ago, but it was just one day where... I wanted to be off so I could hang out. My partner's birthday was within that time frame, and I thought they would have wanted to hang out and have a weekend where they could have just done whatever. So, 
it. Yeah. So this this yarn, by the way, um, my aunt has asked me to send her some so that she can work on some re redesigns of some dolls she's doing for my cousin's daughter. And I have another like little package of these, so I'm I'm literally using one whole package just to make two socks. And I imagine I'll have a little bit left over for her after I do the socks for my partner's mom because she has a smaller foot than my aunt. So I won't use as much yarn for her. So it'll be, it'll be nice. still have some others. I'm hoping, she hasn't asked me yet, like, what's taking so long, so I think she understands that, um, one, post office issue, situation's, like, not ideal at this point, but if I can just go in once with everything, then I'll feel better than going twice, because I really don't want to have to go out any more than I need to with the added restrictions to doing things at the moment. Okay, so we just finished an even round. We still have a ways to go before I can just start knitting plain in, this, in a circle without any decreases, but this is what we're looking at. Nice and simple. I have a three by one rib around the and I've had to add, because it's not, um, there's like several little bundles of the yarn kind of in hank form. So I've had to add a few together to make each sock, which isn't too bad, but kind of annoying at the same time. But I'd rather do that than have an unexpected change in color or knots here and there that didn't belong in the first place. So at least I know when I'm having to incorporate new uh, bundles of yarn. So that's where we are. Thank you so much for watching this Monday. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.